Okay, so this question asked me to find the work done by F along C. And this time C is actually two uh, curves kind of put together. So I have C equals C1 plus C2. And let's read the description for C1. So it is the portion of the parabola where y equals x squared and z equals 0 from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 0. And C2 is the line segment from 1, 0, 0 to 2, 3, 4. So I can see that my two curves connect at 1, 1, 0, and they kind of move up and then out. So to find the work done by F along C, I need to calculate a line integral, right? So let's write the general form for a line integral. So it is the integral of F of R of T times, or dot product id with r prime of t. So in this general form, r of t is the parametrization of the curve. Well, here with two curves, I'm actually going to do two separate line integrals and then add them together at the end. So let's start by parametrizing c1 so I can calculate my first integral. So I know y equals x squared and z equals 0. So I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible and say that t equals x. So that makes y t squared, and then x is just going to be t. So I have t comma t squared comma 0. And I'm going to go from t equals 0 to t equals 1. Because here, my x goes from 0 to 1. All right. Now let's go ahead and find the derivative of this. So this is like my r of t. So let's find r prime by differentiating each term with respect to t. Well, the derivative of t is just going to be 1. The derivative of t squared is going to be 2t. And then this last component is 0, so it's still going to be 0 when I take its derivative. And now let's find f of r of t. So that means plugging in the i component everywhere I see an x, the j component everywhere I see a y, and the k component everywhere I see a z. So let's go ahead and do that. So my first term in f is 1, so that's just going to stay 1. My second term is negative z. Well, negative 0 is just 0. And then my last component is y, which is 2t. Now, to calculate the line integral along c1, I need to take the dot product of f of r of t and r prime of t. So remember, that is the product of the i components plus the product of the k components plus the product of the j components. So here I have 1 times 1, so 1, and then I have 2t times 0, which is 0, then I have 0 times 2t, which is 0 again. So my dot product of f of r of t and r prime of t is actually just going to be 1. So now let's go ahead and integrate that, like up here. So I have just the integral of dt, and then my bounds of integration are going to be the same as my integral for t, which we said was 0 to 1. Well, the integral of dt is going to be t. Evaluated from 0 to 1, so I'm just going to get one. 
throw it up here so I don't forget. And now let's work on C2. So C2 is actually going to be a little bit easier to parameterize since I don't really have to worry about, you know, a squared term or anything. So let's start by subtracting the endpoint from the start point. Yeah, other way around. The start point from the endpoint. So I have 2, 3, 4, minus 1, 1, 0. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 4 minus 0 is 4. So to parameterize C2, I can have the start position plus this difference times t. So I have 1 plus t, 1 plus 2t, and 4t plus 0. Now let's go ahead and find our prime. So just take the derivative of each term with respect to t. One's a constant, the derivative of t is 1. Similarly here, derivative is going to be 2, and then 4. So that was pretty easy. Now let's find f of r of t. We know the drill. Plug this in where I see an x, plug this in where I see a y, and this in where I see a z. So the first component in f is 1, so that just stays the same. My next component is a negative z, so that means negative 4t. And my third component is y, so 1 plus 2t. Now let's find the dot product of f of r of t and r prime of t. So we know the drill, right? Product of the i's plus product of the j's plus product of the k's. So 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times negative 4t is negative 8t. And 4 times quantity 1 plus 2t is 4 plus 8t. Well, my 8s cancel out, and I'm left with 5. So now I want to integrate that. And I just need to set my bounds of integration. So let's look back to the parameterization. Well. We're so many things going on here. Here. OK. So when t equals 0, I'm looking at the point 1, 1, 0. So that's definitely going to be my lower bound. And then how about for t equals 1? I have 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be my upper bound for t. So let's integrate 5 dt. That's going to be 5t. Evaluated from 1 to 0, it's going to give me 5. And let's add that to the line integral I got for C1, and I'm going to get 6. And I could say that F is in newtons, distance is in meters, 6 joules. So that is the work done by F along C.